Hey, you guys. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back. I'm back to do Loving Hip Hop Atlanta Season 8, Episode 1 and 2. This is going to be a short review. It's not going to be a full review because I'm still kind of trying to figure out if I want to review Loving Hip Hop again. Um, I will do a video of why I have been not really been on YouTube like that. But that's going to be a separate video because it ain't got nothing to do with Love & Hip Hop. Um, <laughs> so, let's get into Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, everybody's favorite series. Um, and it's the most ratchet and it gives us the most to talk about when it comes to Atlanta. Stevie J and Faith. I'm just going by characters on the show, people on the show. I'm not going by what started, but we do know Stevie J kind of started the show with him being married to Faith. You know, it's so hard to watch people when they be in Vegas, knowing that I live here. And I'm like, where you going, Stevie? Because just because you driving on the strip don't mean you staying on the strip. I'm just saying, because when he went to go see Faith, Looking like an Airbnb house to me. And then I'm like, y'all was at the Soul Train Awards. And that's on at the new, at the um, Orleans. And that's not on the strip. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, stop <laughs> riding around in the Rolls Royce. And I'm sitting there like, it ain't yours. I know it ain't yours. It ain't Faith's either. They hold, I'm just... I'm just waiting on the fallout. I'm just waiting on the fallout on on social media between them two so we can really, really know the real, real. Because I still feel like it's a publicity stunt. Um, I don't give a fuck if they've been married for a few months, a year, however how long they've been married, whatever. I just still, I, I still side eye. They hold marriage or whatever and her making him a better man and hit da 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 if she was making him a better man, his baby mamas wouldn't be complaining that he don't see his kids. That's one. Because he's not fucking everybody else, do not make him a better fucking man. A better man is your baby mamas not worrying about you not coming to see your kids. And I'm not just talking about fucking Mimi. Because Jocelyn was complaining about the same goddamn thing and still complaining. I'm just saying. Um... But so, yeah, they married, they happy, she had went to the, uh, she got the Lady of Soul Awards. Let me tell y'all, I live here. I get invited to the, to the uh, Soul Train Awards every year that I've been living here. Still ain't been. Still ain't been because, I don't know, it just ain't, mm, okay. Whatever, they be honoring the wrong people to me, but okay. Mimi's storyline is she got shot at. Ty is in Israel. Uh, Stevie moved to L.A., so he she mad that she ain't the main bitch on the bus right now. And it's not all about her. Because, you know, first he was a good dad. Now he a sorry ass dad. <sighs> I'll be over her. When, when, when she's not running Stevie's life or knowing every little detail of Stevie's life, she, she got an attitude. Um, cause she was like, he just uprooted and moved to LA and yada, yada, yada. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck was he doing in Atlanta? I mean, I know he got a kid there, but he got a kid every fucking where. Uh, anyway, she irritates me. Mimi really irritates me. This whole shooting, I side eye. It might have happened. I didn't hear about it. I don't know if the shade room ever posted it must have been something going on that week that was way more popping than Mimi because I don't remember hearing about this, but I still side eye it because she said a dude was sitting in her car and I'm sitting there like, bitch, you don't like your car because you it was at night. You don't like your car at night when you go in the house. Like, how did he get in your car? Then it looked like the bullet hole was in the back of the car and I'm sitting there like, but I thought you said he was sitting in the car and then he shot when he saw you and all that type. I don't know. I'm confused, but you heard her call 911, then you seen her the next day meet up with Erica Dixon, Carly Red, and um, I think it was Rashida. She met up with them to tell them what happened. They that So that's going to be her storyline. She met up with Carly. Uh, Carly went to go see her at the house or whatever, told her she can go stay with her, but she really don't want to, but you know you got to lend your friend a hand to come stay with you just to be a friend, but you really don't want them to stay with you. 
type shit. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I didn't care. I didn't care about Carly being engaged to this dude and they whole relationship. I didn't care. And there's no shade to Carly. It's just that I need to get some more episodes in to judge this relationship because you always have a relationship. So, I don't want to go in on this dude. I don't want to go in on Carly. Um, just because, like I said, it happens every season. And we don't really know if it's real yet. Uh, who else? Spice. She's a whole fucking idiot. I didn't like her last season. I don't think I'm going to like her this season. Um, she's a fucking idiot that doesn't listen. She doesn't fucking listen. Because she, when she sat out, okay, she had a performance at a club. She said she's doing smaller clubs now because she got to try to get her name out there. Which is smart. I don't like when big ass artists come over here and think they just gonna automatically be popping in. So, yeah, it is stair steps to come from over there to over here. So, to see her gaining her her fan base at a smaller venue is cool. Um, Tokyo and her is cool again. Tokyo came to support her at her show. Was dancing on stage with her. They went and sat down. Then we get introduced to Vine. Vine was on another reality show. If you don't know. I remember they tried to link him with Candy from Sweet Addictions. Like, no. That is not my husband. Because we both live in Atlanta. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, Vine was telling her. I was like, bitch, are you not listening? Because all he said was, we need to do something with your image. He didn't say, bitch, change your whole skin. He didn't do none of that. Bitch, he probably saying your blue hair is whack. Ain't nobody going to be following that bullshit. Um, and your clothes is fucked up and too little. So maybe that's what he was talking about. You took it way left. Then I hate when you have these stupid, idiot-ass friends to co-sign bullshit and get you walking into straight to a wall because Tokyo was talking to you and I'm like then she'll say yeah because these record labels be trying to get me to lose a hundred pounds bitch maybe you need to and that's not no shade to big people bitch maybe because of health reasons maybe you need to I'm just saying because you always seem fucking tired like she gets on my fuck <laughs> I used to like Tokyo until she became on Love and Hip Hop. But to see a friend lead another friend into a bad situation and not be like, no, baby girl, that's not what he said. We need to listen. Stay, Take a step back. You jumping the gun. You egg that shit on. So I was irritated. Then Spice didn't listen once again when she went to the doctor. And the doctor said that she needed to refer her to a site for a psych evaluation if that's what she wants to do and to lighten her because she was talking about lighten her skin and she went off on the doctor and the doctor was like bitch that's protocol like what are you talking about why are you going off and i was just like why are we entertaining ignorance see i told y'all this is why i didn't know if i wanted to review love and hip-hop because i don't like grown old ass people being so fucking ignorant and she's very very ignorant um i just hate when people don't listen and i'll be like and i know y'all can't say i wouldn't listen bitch i i was listening i watched it three times i watched love and hip-hop three times only because other people didn't see it and they wanted to watch it again that's the only reason why i got suckered into watching it because me myself and i would not have watched that shit on repeat um Especially for two fucking hours. Anyway, yeah, I do like when Spice was on the phone with her son, FaceTiming her son, because she's having a hard time with them being far away. They stand with her mom while she's getting her career on track. You know the you know st usual storyline of up and coming artists. Um, but I like when Cardi came over there. She consoled her and talked to her about her son and stuff. I did th think that was cool. Um, what else happened with Spice? Oh, her photo shoot. <laughs> Woo! Them bitches looked at her like, what? Huh? And luckily, I had or we had already seen it on social media because I probably would have had the same reaction as Carly and Rashida and um, Mimi because I'm like, what? 
Bitch, you not showing. I hope you. Don't you a little girl? Like, no. No. I don't give a fuck what statement she was trying to make. It was all wrong. And like I said, she's ignorant. So, just fucking ignorant. That whole photo shoot was very dumb. And like I said, y'all over there asking her questions and telling her don't do it. But y'all should have been friends and just walked out and said, bitch, I ain't going to be a part of this bullshit. You ain't going to have me a part of this motherfucking storyline. Hell to the now. So, uh-uh. Uh, what else I want to talk? Carly, uh, when she was talking to people about, uh, not people, but mainly about who she was inviting to her wedding, why do she want to invite Young Jock? I don't understand why do people want to invite their fucking exes. I don't give a shit about how cool y'all are now. Bitch, your ex is not coming to the wedding. They not coming to the wedding reception. They not coming to your mama house family functions no more. What the fuck? Why are we setting ourselves up to for, for Carly to be going to fuck Jock in the bathroom? Because y'all know they always going to do some bullshit knowing they don't go together. What? Dumb. Dumb. Um, let me tell you about some storylines I didn't care about. I didn't care about uh, Sierra and BK working shit out. I don't care about this pool girl. I must talk about her when she talked to Carly. But other than that, I don't care yet. Because, like I said, we don't know too much about them to have a story, opinion too much about her. But the way she went at Carly at the end, I don't think I'm going to like her. Um... Erica, we know she having twins. I don't know if they're going to show it on the show, but who cares? Anyway, Mama D, why do you keep embarrassing your kids? I don't give a fuck how grown they are. I will be embarrassed as her child. I don't give a fuck how much y'all think that Mama D is uh, cool and she hip and all this. For the first episode, for her to be stripping, I don't care how... It was her birthday. I was on a, on a bar for my 40th birthday too, bitch, but all my clothes was on. <sighs> then you got your homegirl. It was weird. It was nasty. It was out of line. I don't know why she encourages, people encourages that. Um, what she said about Bam's mom on the mic, was out of line. So now you about to have a storyline beefing with Bam Mom. Like, this is dumb. And if she was out of line for her to say that, knowing all three of them wasn't there, knowing the cameras was on, knowing it was going to get, it's going to get back to them what she said, or they had to watch that for the first time. Mama D was be out of line and nobody checks her. So, oops, I'm going to just say it. But you out of line, Mama D. And I like her at times, but then at times I'll be like, no. So then she ends up sitting down with KK or whatever, and KK tells her that Scrap is in the halfway house. He almost home type stuff. But he's stuck in there because all they families is criminals. Can't nobody get him to come home for a few hours because ain't nobody got a clean record. I said, damn. That don't make no sense. That, <laughs> woo, that don't make no sense. We got to do better, black people, for you not to have nobody in your family be able to go get you because you guys all got criminal records. Mm -mm. But then he finds out he got a half-sister. After his 40 years on this earth or 30-some years on this earth, he got a half-sister named Cheyenne that he didn't know about because his mama was so grimy and so messed up and so bitter that she wouldn't tell him that he had a sister knowing that he had a sibling since the conception. But your ass didn't tell your child that they had a sibling because you was bitter. Then when she was trying to explain about the daddy, I'm just getting like, bitch, I don't even have time to get a headache to keep listening to this lie. And your son noticed it was a lie too. Um, They talked about Tommy and her bad behavior at the school with her daughter and everybody want to feel sorry and she a victim and oh my god her the way she grew up and her mama treated her bitch it don't give you no reason to treat your daughter fucked up because your mama treated you fucked up like she don't get no pass from that fuck tommy like no then it she thinks rules don't apply to her 
until she gets in trouble. Then you want to make these punk ass statements. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hurt my fans. But you keep doing the same shit. No. You don't go to court drunk. You don't beat up your daughter at the school. Right after you had got out of jail. So she gets no pass with me. She doesn't get no pass when she's not making... We have not seen it, her do better. And if she have done better, they ain't showed it. She ain't showed it. So can't say nothing about it. Um, Who else I want to talk about? Last but not least that I'm going to talk about tonight, um, today. Um, and it's going to be what it is for this review. Is Rashida Kirk can and Kanan... And the sister, uh, it's their 19th wedding anniversary. And they think it's a good idea to spend a 19th wedding anniversary with the baby. <laughs> that be messing up, that was messing up, uh, parts of their, their marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like, he cheated on you in your marriage and had a baby. And y'all can bring this baby. Mm, okay. But anything for TV, let's film, let's make it seem like Rashida's a better person than allowing Kanan, Kanan to come over here, knowing she don't really want Kanan over here. But since the public gave her backlash of the way she treats this baby like it's his fault, she's going to make it seem like she's a good stepmom. Bitch, no, you're not. You're not a new ste good stepmom when the first time you have this little boy on camera and you try to make his mama, who has been having him for the last two years, seem like a bad mama. When she's doing the best that she can do with no help from her sorry-ass baby daddy, she has no help besides money from the baby daddy, and you and, and she don't... This is her first child, but not his first child. So he could be over there helping her and showing her and helping her potty train the little boy. But y'all want to talk about her and her parenting skills. And he kept, and then he going to say, well, I want to talk to her mom and the grandmama because that's the ones that's been taking care of him. And I just want to see if he's well taken care of. Like, he ain't been well taken care of for these last fucking two years. Like... I hate when people do that. You ain't been around, but now it's on camera. You want to make her look like the bad fucking parent? Fuck you and Rashida. Period. I don't care if my, my videos don't get no money. I don't make no money on YouTube anyway. But I, when it comes to this show, I curse a lot because they're stupid ass people. They're very fucking ignorant. And this is what keeps cycles going in black communities for... People to try to bash this girl instead of trying to help her. But you study trying to make her seem bad. Like, your husband didn't do wrong, Rashida. Like, come on now. Like, I don't like the way they try to portray Jasmine every fucking season. Okay, we know she did wrong. We know she fucked the married man. But so did that married man fuck that little girl. And Rashida, so did you keep taking him back after he keep fucking different girls. So, shut that shit down. That shit wasn't cool. Um, the way she was mad because the way he was responding to you. Bitch, he don't know you. He don't know you. And you keep trying to get in his face when he's trying to play. And it's all these cameras right here, bitch. You get what you get. Bitch, you got bad energy. He hear you talking shit. Bitch, you got bad energy. Anyway, that's my review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 8, Episode 1 and 2. I hope you guys liked the video. Like it, share it, comment, all that good stuff. I would do a separate video on all the drama and why I've been on YouTube or whatever. But I'll talk to you guys in the next video.